when you work together, along with being a family, there, there's, a, there's a different bond. And, and then when you realize that your dad, who's in my mind an aviation legend, trusts you in your work, that's a good feeling. It's, and it's hard to describe, but it's just, you know, at that point you realize, I made it. Got the respect of a legend, so. I say around when I was 10 years old, I really fell in love with airplanes and uh, couldn't, an airplane couldn't fly over that I wouldn't stop what I was doing and take a look. To this day, as old as I am, I'd rather go to the airport uh, than do about anything else. That's about all he thinks about is airplanes. Airplanes is, and, and aviation is in his blood. When I first met him, his dreams and his goals was to improve aviation. He could not wait to get up and go to the airport. He has been called at some point early on in his career to help advance flight in America. And I believe it's that passion to continue you know, doing good things in his field that's really what's kept him moving forward. This is the story of James Connell, American aviation legend, husband, father, grandfather, good friend, and faithful Christian. Oh, it feels, makes me feel great. I, uh, to have the whole family uh, doing something that I've loved for as long as I've loved it, it, it is truly great. I'm Patrick Connell, son of James Connell. I grew up at the airport in Independence. The reason I like aviation and got involved is because in the very beginning, I was introduced to aviation in a way that probably no one else ever was. I was shown the ins and outs of aviation from the, from the very beginning, and I fell in love with working on airplanes. My two brothers became pilots. I never did that. All I ever wanted to do was work on them. And throughout my young life, I learned the insides and outsides of an airplane from the top to the bottom, and it's served me well in my entire career. When I grew up to be a little bit older, I was smarter than my dad when I was 17, so I had to join the military and work on helicopters for a while. And when I came back at 20, he was smarter than I was again. And so, pretty interesting way to grow up, I think. We took a flight here for, with a friend at one time, and, and another gentleman that was sitting in the lounge area when we got back, he said to me, he said, well, how did you like your flight? And I was impressed that he asked me how I liked the flight. He was genuinely asking, you know? And I said, oh, I love it. I, I would just, I wish I could, I wish I could be up there all the time. And he says, well, why don't you learn to fly? And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, this is unreal. How, me learn to fly? Well, that kept working on my mind, you know, and I, and he says, well, you can, you can drive a car, can't you? And I said, well, yeah. Well, he says, if you can drive a car, you can fly an airplane. Well, that never left my mind for days. I kept thinking, oh my gosh, there is a chance that I could fly an airplane. So that's when I decided that a ground school was coming up. So I went to the ground school. And, and the experiences of the instructor, which was, was Jim, and what he was, had went through in his lifetime of teaching people and some of his actual experiences and learning about how many different areas that aviation and, and learning to fly includes, it just was so interesting that I just had to keep up and, and keep going. And I did receive my pilot's license through all that. My name's Dave. I'm the third oldest son, best looking, most politically correct. Hi, I'm Alyssa. I am Mike's daughter. Mike is the oldest uh, son of Jim, and I am the oldest granddaughter in the Connell family. And I grew up uh, kind of as a hangar brat. I was that kindergartner walking to the school bus, uh, you know, off the airport, and getting on the bus and getting dropped off after school uh, at, back at the airport. Aviation is a family business. Connell is synonymous with aviation. 100 low lead runs through the family veins. And that is all thanks to the passion of Jim. I think probably as a flight instructor, soloing people out, having people come to the airport that 
know nothing about flying and being able to describe it to them, show it to them, and uh, let them practice that, and then watch them fly the first time themselves. I think that's a, a real thrill, still is. Uh, when I first sold myself, you know, it was in a airplane without an electrical system, without radios, without lights, and uh, it, it was mainly a, a hobby type thing, and uh, now uh, general aviation has advanced to uh, moving freight and moving people, and uh, actually the fastest way to get to Chicago is the slowest airplane here on the Independence Airport. Been a lot of changes in aviation, but then tech, the, the radios, uh, we used to lay out courses and maps and wind triangles and all that sort of stuff, and now you just push a button and it tells you what heading to fly to Nashville. Well, I think Jimmy's passion for, for flying, at, you know, has reflected on his family and on his, his kids. They grew up with aviation, so, uh, and they helped in, in the maintenance field. They helped with his spraying operation that he had. So that was a great, uh, a, a great learning experience, and, the, and they just grew up with it, you know. It was just an uh, everyday thing that they were going to do. So it's been very beneficial for all of them, I think. The kids were raised at the airport, you know, and so it was hard to get, you know, not to see it, and uh, I was in a flight instructor, so uh, my oldest boy, I taught him how to fly, and uh, he sold it when he was 16 years old on his birthday. Uh, and, uh, but he could fly an airplane, but he couldn't drive a car yet, legal, legally. I'm sure, I'm sure Dad wasn't happy with it a lot of times, because my brothers and I, we would goof around, you know, just to, shoot baskets outside. We had a basketball hoop up outside the shop and we're supposed to be working on stuff and he's shooting touch and goes and okay he made the turn. Run out there and play basketball for five minutes. Okay they're turning to come in again get back inside. And little things like that. But hope that doesn't get me in trouble. <laughs> when we were growing up money was tight and the money that we did have went back into the family business. So we didn't take elaborate cruise vacations or big vacations somewhere else. And so a lot of what we did was live and breathe our family company. So family really is what became so important to me and to my you know, little microcosm of a world was our family. So seeing that family grow in this company then really made me understand the value of those relationships. So I have hero worship for my grandfather, Jim. He is and always has been kind of on a, a pedestal to me as somebody that I look up to and want to emulate and be like. But having a Jim as your grandfather and knowing how important he is to you and how important he is to other people, it, it creates such a kind of a blanket of security for you to know that you have somebody like that in your life. And I doubt that my grandfather actually knows or understands the impact that he's had on me and the impact then that I tried to leave to my children. And he would probably be embarrassed if he knew how important he really was in my life. But I know that I speak for so many of my other cousins and my own brother when I say that that man and having that man as your grandfather is, is something that uh, has made my life really full. Well, the reason I think that 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 a airport just kind of snatches you off is that you never know from one day to the next what what your day is going to be like. Honored as one of the second generation promoters and forever commemorated in the Iowa Aviation Museum, Jim Connell has spent his entire career promoting the love of aviation to others. I think the greatest legacy that he's left is that he's made a tremendous, tremendous amount of friends. And he has taught a lot of people how to fly, how to, you know, the maintenance side of, of aviation. But it's been his manner of how he teaches people. He never ever give you the feeling when you were flying with him that you could not accomplish this. It was, if this is what you want to do, you can do this. Well, he's the uh, one who got me started in flight instruction. I got my flight instructor rating with Jim Connell. 
I've been, I looked it up in my logbook this morning. I first flew with Jim Connell April 23rd, 1974. That's coming up real close to 41 years ago, almost to the day. <laughs> and so that had a big effect on my career. You know, in some ways it's hard to describe. I mean, to have an airport as your backyard, how can you beat that? The types of people that came through and seeing your dad operate in so many different environments and in interacting with so many different people. You know, watching people take their first experience in flight and then come down and then, and then be hooked lifelong. How does that compare? We were able to, and dad was able to touch so many people's lives over the years in such a positive manner. Um, once you're introduced to aviation and flight, there is no escaping it. And so many people never did, and they enjoyed it through their whole career, and dad maintains a long list of contacts of people that he still talks to from the 60s and 70s when he was really getting going and, and really getting into his own. And as I look back on it, not only was I developing, but I got to watch my dad develop in business and in, and in his personal skills. And he was always the calm bedrock, you know, in the sometimes hectic world that we lived in. You know, we went through two tornadoes and we had to rebuild. And I can honestly say that I've never seen my dad ever lose his calm in anything regarding aviation. We were, it was amazing to watch. Follow your dream. If this is what you really like, stick with it, because it's gonna be up and it's gonna be down and not every day is gonna be a good day, but uh, Follow your dream and it'll reward you. He has touched and shared uh, in, in flight in this passion of aviation in so many people. But yet he's, it's, he's just gone almost uh, quietly through his career. He's a soft-spoken soul. He is the type of person that gives and gives and gives and never really takes for himself. And I wanted him to know that the world recognizes his contribution and that the world, however big our world is, that the world knows, hey, Jim Connell, you are important and you're valuable and you have left behind throughout your career all of these touch points and all these milestones. And you hear these stories, right, coming out of my uncles and, and people that he's touched and they all say the same thing, Jim Connell, thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution as a man, as a father, as a grandfather, and as an aviator, and we're all better for you. And that's what I wanted to make sure he knew. Jim's legacy in aviation is really quite extensive, and I would break it down into the to four areas. You know, and the four areas are airport management, FBO management, maintenance, and flying and flight instruction. And on the airport management one, in that 40 years, I've seen this airport go from a little pea gravel strip about 2,800 foot long with a, literally a shack for an office and a, a, a real dinky little hangar and some junky tea hangers to what it is today of, you know, a, a true business class airport, 5,500 foot with instrument approaches, parallel taxiway, first class facilities all the way around. And I come back a little bit to what, that doesn't just happen, <laughs> that it goes from there, from, from nothing to being, you know, the, basically a, a first class general aviation airport, particularly for a city the size of Independence. It's just extraordinary. Now, Jim joins his family on yet another aviation adventure. He serves as the Patriarch and Executive Advisory Board Member of Connell Aviation Group, the nation's only communications firm led by aviators, for aviators. I would hope that they would open many lines of communication that are not there now. Uh, I think a problem with a lot of the airports and, and, and aviation itself is that lack of communication, lack of knowledge. You know? A uh, few people know about the airport, but uh, the average person in town doesn't, and uh, maybe we can solve that problem. Sharing of knowledge is what we're talking about with Canal Aviation Group, and uh, and that it could be one of the ways. I mean, we do run into things, and we that we can't solve problems we can't solve ourselves. So, 
uh, we kind of go into a, a big group of people that nobody possibly know the answers anyway. You know, if, if they wanted to contact us, we certainly we'd have a lot of the answers. Certain people know certain things, and uh, aviation is our game. I had this vision and this idea of way to bring back the family together working in, and using my skills and then honoring my grandfather's legacy and that's how uh, the company now that I run Connolly Aviation Group was founded and it really truly was a way for me to show my grandfather just really how important he is to me. It doesn't seem to come as any big surprise that most people would voluntarily choose to be just like Jim Connell. Would I want to be like my dad? Every day. Every day I strive to, to live up to the ideals that he put into us. You know, the strength and the wisdom and calm and, and making decisions based upon knowledge and fact and, and leading. And I've grown to be in a position of leadership and I, I look back constantly at all the things that, that went into bringing me along to being who I am and what I am. I, I couldn't have asked for a better upbringing to get me where I am today and to launch me still to where the goals I haven't met yet that I'm still trying to attain. Dad's legacy is, is I'm in awe of what he's accomplished. I remember as a little kid riding out in the backseat of a car to a gate and an outhouse and a grass strip and we obviously didn't have the vision that he had for the Independence Airport and a lot of hard work he put in and look at it now, you know, that's, a, that's an excellent legacy. I would uh, like to tell my grandfather, uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you for always being that um, that unwavering pillar for all of us. It's really hard to have a big family and to make sure that everyone in your family understands how valuable that they are and that, that they're loved and that they matter. And um, Grandpa does that. And he loves every person in the family for who, uh, see I'm gonna get all worked up. He loves everyone for um, our own unique gifts and talents. And the greatest gift that we give him as a family is to be a family and to be together. And so I just would tell him, uh, thank you for uh, supporting me, whether it's professionally or personally. I have, I was that 14 year old kid that, um, or maybe I wasn't even 14, maybe I was 12, I don't know, that had never been anywhere. and was a 49ers fan because my grandpa was a 49ers fan. I didn't know anything about football. I was just a dumb junior high girl. But I learned everything I could about the 49ers football team because that's who my grandpa's logo was on his shirt. So I checked out a book and I memorized every player on the 49ers football team. And I called him up and I said, ask me some questions about the 49ers because I'm a 49ers fan grandpa. And as a reward for just loving him, he uh, took me on vacation out to California and drove me around Candlestick Park and, and took me along and made me feel special and made me feel important and changed my life. I think when we look back and we really sit down and, and get an appreciation of what's happened, that my children and their children will realize the true scope of greatness that they were able to see while it was actually happening. And I think that's unimaginably impressive. A long time ago, I read this newspaper article that said, if you got stuck in a long line with somebody, what would be the type of person that you would want to have, that you'd have to be stuck in a long line with? And if I was stuck in a long line of people and had to wait, I would want to wait with him. He's the person that I would pick to wait in a long line with. I told my doctor the other day, I'm about 80 years old, and I'm afraid that one of these days I'm just gonna walk off the edge, you know, and just be nothing more than a, a puff of dust somewhere, you know? But uh, to me, this is very, it's important to, to stay involved with aviation and 
And uh, I think it's helping to keep me as young as possible. 